What is going on everyone? It is Dr. Mondo and it's Tuesday night, which means it's time for another episode of rewriting my story. Not my story, but your story. And we are here uh, live from the comfortable confines of my backyard. I did my last Facebook live uh, here uh, in, in Midtown today. So I figured why not uh, just keep the theme going of being outside. It's a beautiful day. Not to rub it in because I know some of you guys are, uh, you're typically laying in bed from what I know um, with, with folks back on the East Coast or in the central time zone at about at about this time. But uh, we still have daylight out here at six o'clock on the West Coast. And I wanted to come out here and just enjoy this beautiful weather and have an amazing conversation with someone uh, that, that, that definitely motivates and inspires me. Someone that, uh, you know, whose story uh, is just amazing. I mean, I'll let him tell, of course, most of it. Um, hey, Shelly and uh, hey, Ryan, thanks for joining us. Uh, guys, and uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Um, and, and there he is, the man of the hour, uh, Richard Hubbard, who I will be inviting on camera here in a minute. Uh, before I do, I wanna just tell you a little bit more about how this interview came about. I also want to just uh, tell you a little bit more um, about what the show is, if this is the first time that you ever tuned in and, and, and you're really here for the first time. So uh, before I get to, to Richard and his story, and, and he'll join me in a moment, uh, please make sure, if you can, that you would that you'd be so kind to share this broadcast. And, and the reason I ask you to share this broadcast is, is simply because uh, what we found, especially last week, I don't know if you, if you guys were with us last week. Last week, the worst thing that you could have happen on a Facebook Live happened. Uh, we had technical difficulties. We could not get our guest, uh, Justin Lacey, on, on camera. In fact, he'll be back on uh, to make up for that. He did stick with us though, and he did do the audio, and it was an amazing interview. I got great feedback on it. But part of the reason I got great feedback on it is because we had 68 shares. I mean, 68 shares, unbelievable. We had so many comments. There was over 10,000 impressions on from that video, um, almost 7,000 views. You know, I talk all the time about we're not defined by the numbers, uh, and, and that, that truly goes for this program. One person could tune in. And we've had that where we really, we had 20 people tune in on some of these broadcasts at the beginning and their lives were changed or they were inspired to change or they didn't feel shame as much anymore. Uh, you know, I just, again, that's why we do this is to, to, to really inspire and encourage more people, especially those groups of people right now that are, that are feeling ashamed about their weight or feeling ashamed about their health transformation who uh, right now don't have a lot of faith that they can make it, uh, they're ready to give up. You know, you guys are the reasons why, uh, why we have this broadcast. So again, thank you so much for, for sharing. Um, I know that the, the Chins, uh, the Missing Chins Running Club, uh, Nalita is tuning in, uh, and then that was a comma, and Nalita's tuning in. So thank you guys so much for, for tuning in. I'm gonna let everyone just uh, show up and, uh, and get settled in. But what is this show that we have here called Rewriting My Story and who am I? I'm a licensed therapist, a uh, licensed psychotherapist. No, I'm not trying to analyze you. No, I'm not trying to figure out what you're thinking. I know what, what other things, uh, I'm not gonna put you on a couch and, and have you lie down. None of that's gonna happen here on this broadcast. Um, but, you know, uh, I'm a licensed therapist and my passion is to help people on their health transformations. Um, I, I've been someone that I grew up overweight. I got a chance to be interviewed today um, on the Unlocking Wellness podcast with Dr. Casey Johnson. And I was able to tell some of my story and, and it just really made me reflect on, um, on my story and how I grew up as an overweight kid. Uh, I gained and, and lost the same 80, 90 pounds like eight or nine times before it finally stuck. Uh, this most recent time on a whole foods plant-based uh, diet. So anyway, uh, I do this broadcast because I know that there is more, uh, more to the story than just the before and after pictures. I know that when I see a before and after picture, because I've been through it, I know I always say, I wonder what that person's story is. I wonder what their relationship with food, what was like before. I wonder how food played a role of comforting them. I, I wonder what it was like for them to go from being overweight in a weight shaming society to losing weight and getting attention from the opposite sex. Uh, I wonder what it was like to have their friends and family go through that change process with them. How many of them rejected that transformation? How many of them uh, you know, joined them on their journey, uh, even just if they were joining in support? 
That's what led me to do the research I did with NBC's The Biggest Loser. That's what, what has led me to create the online program that we have at drmondo.org. And you know now, uh, basically, what we do with this Tuesday night show is we just interview people about their stories because w what I tell people is is that this is this is a chance for people to really to really learn that there's more to the before and after photos, but it's also a chance for people to kind of get kind of reflect on where it is they came from. You know, Justin Lacey last week lost 300 pounds, and uh, it's not about who lost more weight. Uh, everyone's story is incredible. Um, but but really what it's about is it's, it's, it's a chance to reflect and have Justin reflect on what it was like to be in that position at one point. And the reason I think it's so important is because there are so many people right now that are, are listening to this uh, or they're watching this and they're hopeless. And if that's you, I just want to let you know you are the reason why we are doing this tonight. Uh, you are the reason why we have this, this, this program. You are the reason why we have this broadcast. I am not the only person that is, uh, that is out there that's really wanting to help you. I'm so lucky to have partnerships with tons of amazing guests and gyms around the country that are trying to help people. I guess what I want to say is there's a lot of people that really care, and this is a broadcast to remind you of that. It's a broadcast also to instill hope back into your journey. It's also a broadcast to give you some tools. Uh, you know, we know the emotional side of this journey is important. We know it's often neglected. And in this broadcast, we aren't going to neglect that uh, any longer. We're definitely going to give it its due. And the way we give it its due is by having a guest on who's so courageous to tell their story. Hey, Joe. Hey, Kristen. We got people rolling in. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, again, so so that is why we do what we do. And, uh, and it's so exciting to have you guys here tonight. So again, like, uh, share ask questions, uh, you know, just get comfortable and get settled in. And tonight's inspiration is no other than Richard Hubbard. And here in a moment, I'm going to get Richard on, uh, on the broadcast to join in with me. Richard, if you want to join, uh, if you want to maybe log, let's see if I can't. Yeah. For some reason, Richard is telling me I can't, uh, I can't bring you on the camera. If you can log in and log out real quick, that'd be perfect. Um, really quick, just, just for accept my request but i just i just tried to add someone else to the broadcast while we're waiting for richard to get up and running again ashley if you can help richard with that um, we had the same problem with matt uh, earlier when i did a, a q a session with him um, for some reason i can't add you to the screen but i'm sure uh i'm, I'm sure we'll be able to do it um in a moment so uh anyway uh no i Richard, Dr. Mondo, Ashley, my peeps, love it. Justin Lacey, that's, that's who I was actually getting ready to add while we were waiting for Richard to jump on because Justin could not get, uh, get everything working out with his technology last week. So I was figuring why not just go ahead and do that. There's Richard. Uh, Justin, we will get you on, I promise, one of these weeks. Technology will work out for us. Um, but until then, uh, here's the man of the hour, Richard Hubbard. He's, he's joining us now um, to tell us more about his story. And um, okay, I think it's working. And here we go. Hey, how are you, Richard? Dr. Mondo. Yeah. Good. To, good to see you, man. How are you doing? I think the connection's kind of settling in. It looks like. Now you're frozen on us. Yeah. Is it okay now, or? Okay. I think. It seems to be I think good. it's a, it's getting a little bit better. Yeah. Yeah. Can you hear me? Okay. Okay, cool. 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 Yeah, well, I'm just so excited to have you on here. How many times have you got a chance, Richard, to share your story before? Um, I did a video for um, Ian Myers um, uh, probably six months ago. I am wellness. Uh, he, he does um, uh, raw food diets and he helps people uh, transition to raw uh, vegetables and fruit. Um, I also did um, Jason Cohen. Um, I believe you interviewed, interviewed him as well. I did. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. I was in the big change. Awesome. So, yeah. And that documentary is coming out later this year, right? Yeah. Well, I did his podcast. I don't know if he's going to use the uh, – use me. Oh, I got you. Okay. We'll see what awesome. happens. So, yeah. so, so tell, tell people more of, uh, kind of about your story. Uh, you know, uh, just give them a quick overview, then, then we'll jump in a little bit. But – um, you know, the first thing that people always want to know is how much weight did you lose? Um, and, and so maybe you can just kind of highlight that if sure. there's some before and after pictures, uh, we, we could show there's those two, 
Um, I don't have my iPad in front of me. So Ashley, I want to have you dump those pictures into the feed if you can, if you're there, Ashley, um, that'd be awesome. But, that one too, right? um, and if you, and you have here too, there you go. Okay. So, so what weight were you at in that picture? If you want to hold that still for a second, yeah, hold that I up there probably, for a second. Um, I was over 350. I stopped weighing myself uh, when I reached 345 because I didn't want to see the number go higher. Um, I don't know if yeah. that way of saying I wasn't getting fatter, but that's when I stopped weighing myself. So I don't actually know mm. what my highest was, but it's probably, I don't know, 370 or something. But it was definitely over three. Yeah. And... Uh, yeah, so 350. And, and so do me a favor, look at that, that photo for a second. When you look at that photo, I'm just curious, like, what do you what, what do you see when you look at that photo? Because obviously, I look at you and, and, and you look, you look pretty darn different. But like, when you look at that photo, what, what do you see when you when you when you view yourself um, there at the 345, 350? Even though I'm smiling, I was definitely um, depressed. I wasn't happy with how it was looking. Um, it was the fattest I ever was. Um, uh, I knew I had to change, but um, even seeing myself in pictures, that, that didn't force me to change. Uh, I just felt hopeless, like you were describing at the beginning of this podcast, um, yeah. which I'm sure a lot of people yeah. feel when, when they're starting the journey. Um, I was doing yo-yo dieting, getting nowhere. Uh, I would lose a little weight, and it would come back. Um, and um, mm. from listening to the other po um, podcasts you've done, uh, I feel uh, the same way. You have to have a lifestyle change. Uh, it can't be about weight loss. Because for me, um, it never worked when I was concentrating on losing weight. It was only when I was focused. How many times? I'm sorry. It's only when, when I was focused, on, focused on healthy when I actually lost the weight. Yeah, you're right. That, that's what we see time and again in terms of what the research shows for people being successful. Um, you know, you mentioned the hopelessness. I want to kind of take you back into that a little bit. I know it's hard, um, but it's honestly, you know, I, I know the reasons why a lot of folks share their stories to pay it forward. Um, by you going back into the hopelessness, again, those are the people we're talking to here tonight. There's some people that maybe have turned the corner on hopelessness or they're still uh, or they're still feeling it and they're entrenched in it. And so you know, I, I just want to go back because, Richard, you know, um, for someone that is just just getting to know you. Uh, you look like a guy that's in, in incredible health. And, um, you, you know, I know that when you look at that photo that, um, you know, you're still adjusting to the guy you see probably in the mirror today. But I just want to like, I want to understand more about what was the experience like for you emotionally before losing the weight? Um, were you depressed? Uh, you mentioned being hopeless. Tell me more about that. Yeah, yeah. I, I was depressed because um, when I think back to my college days, um, I did a lot of walking. Um, I went to uh, college in New York City, uh, Brooklyn, and um, in Pratt and Oh, cool. And um, we would do a lot of walking, uh, go to the city every day. Um, I did keep my weight down. Um, yeah, I enjoyed uh, being active. And um, it wasn't until after I graduated college when I really started to put on the weight because I think part of it was having um, a desk job, um, actually, when I first got out of college, I couldn't find a job right away, so I think I was also depressed from, uh, you know, not working. Uh, so, uh, yeah, yeah. for a couple of years um, later, when I um, finally found something in my field, it was a desk job, and I didn't think about um, how much sitting I would do. And um, the problem with that job, there was always junk food around. And um, I think it was uh, Justin who said last week, or, or one of your interviews, um, which I could relate to, that uh, the people around him, they weren't gaining weight. You know, they were eating the same foods. Um, I'm sure it had something to do with um, everybody's metabolism is different. But here I was eating all this junk food, too, and gaining the weight. And uh, it was frustrating. And um, I never could say no to the food. Um, I also... Um, had fast food addiction. I, um, I uh, how, and how do you know? How how do you, how would you classify that? Because there's people out there, and if you guys are listening, and if some of you maybe think that you also share with what would qualify as class uh, fast food addiction, maybe Richard can expand on that and and, and maybe tell people how uh, you know what is fast food addiction? How uh, what, what what did that look like for you when you were living that? Um, sometimes it would be um, a couple meals a day at like McDonald's. Um, I would get maybe two or three Egg McMuffins in the morning. Um, uh, 
like three or four cheeseburgers a night, French fries, um, milkshake. Um, and this was, was that most was that most days or like every once in a while? No, it was most days eventually. Um, I just didn't yeah. um, like to cook at home. I didn't think about variety. Um, I didn't eat much uh, vegetables. And the strange thing is I, I did like vegetables uh, growing up. Um, I just didn't um, bother with them, you know, um, after college. And so, so it's just a yeah, really, you were in you were in like this this cycle. Yeah, it was a bad cycle, and I just couldn't break it. Um, and I would also eat a lot of um, ice cream each day and um, candy and just everything that was wrong. And uh, the problem is um, diabetes runs in my family, uh, especially on my mom's side. Um, there's hypertension and uh, lots of health problems. And um, you know, a lot of people in my family are on medication, and I knew that I was going down that road, and I really didn't want to, um, but yet I wasn't making the changes. And and is that something for you? You know, here you are, and so many people I'm sure listening can relate to that, having a family history of folks that are struggling. Um, I guess what I want to, I was going to ask something, but I want to go back to that. Yeah, as I'm just saying that out loud, I'm thinking, so many people have a family history of, of health problems and there's two ways you can go about it. I'm sure there's a third, but we'll just make it easy. And say there's two ways. One is to be just, just feeling like that's your fate and that you're destined to just live that. that so you might way. as well have a fast food addiction. Yeah. Is that how you felt? I did. I did. Um, yeah. well, there other... So what broke, what, 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 what broke that though? You know, I think that that's what's so fascinating because there's people listening right now, Richard, who feel that way that they, that they're struggling with fast food addiction. They're struggling uh, in, in terms of in terms of feeling like what's the point? My family history is right. going to lead me down that road to an early death anyway. Yeah. So yeah, like how do you go from that to to to, to what you're doing now, which is such amazing things and, and losing the weight? What 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 was the light bulb moment well, for you? Well, before I say that, let me say that I never thought um, I would st uh, stick with it, and I never thought I would um, be um, the kind of person I am today. You know, I realized. Um, you never thought that. Well, I never thought I was the type of person that wouldn't quit. Now I'm determined to do um, everything I set out to do, um, you know, physically. Um, uh, you know, before I would say I can't run, and now now I can run. You know, I, I couldn't lift weights before. I feel like nothing could stop me now. Um, but... So, well, and, that, and that's important because I know I asked that quite – we'll come back to that real quick, but the – the whole thing about rewriting your story, there was things that you are doing now that if someone, if, if I would have went to you and said, Richard, one day you're going to be, you know, this, this incredible beast in the gym and you're going to be running and you're going to be, you know, you probably would have looked at me like, man, this guy's crazy. Exactly. Huh? Yeah. No way. Yeah, especially <laughs> since. No I, way. Yeah. I, I avoided, um, well, I, I did go to the gym. I shouldn't say I never went to the gym. I probably did like once a week. But it was nothing I took serious back when I was heavy. And um, anyway, well, do you want me to get to what um, was the breaking point now before I forget? Yeah, you know, yeah, because I, there is something that I'm, there's so much I'm fascinated about your story. And, and so, yeah, I just, I think, you know, we could, we could spend a lot of time painting it. But I, I think what I'm hearing you basically say is you were in this cycle of, of fast food addiction. You're from a family that has, uh, you know, health problems that run in, run in the family, yep. it would have been really easy to accept that as your fate too. And, uh, and yet here you are, and, and, you're, and by the way, I'll add to that, you didn't have a whole strong sense of belief that you could change a whole lot of that or that no, you I would didn't. be someone no. different, but yet here you are today. So that, that's puzzling for me and for all of our listeners and viewers. It's puzzling how a man that had that story before becomes a man right now that that is unstoppable so i want to know uh take me back yeah. yeah what was the turning point or as you called it the breaking point right. well th this is what happened um the um where i work uh, i work at a community college um it's a state job and they require um everybody to have um, a physical for um health insurance this, this was a new policy they uh they adapted um um in 2012 so that's when I finally had to face my fear of learning if I was diabetic or any other other health problems. 
So it was that physical that actually uh, woke me up. Um, so, and, and how old were you? How reason, old were you when you had that physical? Uh, thirty-eight, I believe. Yeah, it was uh, upper thirties. Thirty-eight. Um, so there I was um, getting my physical, and I had to face my fears. And um, yeah, uh, actually, before the physical, I, I knew that um, I didn't want to be at my worst when I saw the doctor. So for a few weeks before, I actually started to cut down the fast food and uh, make some changes. Um, uh, and it seemed to help a little because um, even though my sugar was high, I wasn't diabetic when I actually saw the doctor. So I don't know if I somehow um, made some changes before then, before finding out I was actually diabetic. But what I did learn was... So you were, was, in, you were in the change process, yeah. Yeah. So when I heard that I was hypertensive, that's when um, I really knew I had to step it up, step up the game. And, you know, um, I didn't want to be on meds. That was the thing. I didn't want to be my parents. Um, my dad uh, would sometimes tell me that, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to end up uh, like him. He's not overweight, but he's on tons of meds. He always says to me, um, wait till I get to be his age, you know, um, Mm. All this and what did that mean? So wait to be his age, just, just, yeah, I, yeah. I don't, I don't just, so that, that wasn't the sort of life you wanted. Yeah, especially now, I don't accept things like that, and I, I want to prove to people that um, a, a healthy lifestyle works. So I, I think um, I had this this um, stubborn way about me that I didn't realize I had, and I just wanted to prove people wrong, like my doctor who. Um, so you, you harnessed that, yeah. Wow. And my doctor, who, who uh, immediately prescribed um, hypertension medication, uh, I filled the prescription. I tried to find the bottle tonight because I know I saved it somewhere, but I never took one pill. I ended up uh, calling him and said, I want to do it this way. I want to um, see if I can lose the weight and not take a pill. So um, wow. he, he didn't um, believe I could do it, but he went along with it anyway and said he'd try it for a few months. He actually told me to join Weight Watchers, which um, I had no interest in doing. I wanted to <laughs> do it on my own. Sure. Um, so um, my local Y, they were doing a wellness challenge, and um, I thought this is a great way to, um, you know, start to start my uh, journey. So it was a team of four, and um, I worked very hard um, for three months. I, I don't think I ever worked so hard in my life. Um, that's that's when I first started my ten thousand steps a day. Um, which I still do today. Um, I have an Apple Watch now. Back then, it was just a cheap pedometer. Wow. Um, so that started my walking challenge. Uh, and um, I, I, there, there has been a few days, probably like 10 days in the past five years that I uh, haven't walked 10,000 steps, but it's a rarity. But anyway, so um, yeah, during this challenge, I, I learned um, more and more how to eat healthy, um, and uh, this man uh, right here, this book, uh, I don't know if everybody can see it, Dr. Furman. I learned about Dr. Yeah. Furman. I bought his book, uh, Eat to Live, and uh, he changed my life a lot. Um, he, uh, it, what was it about that book that changed your life? I hear that all the time about that book, yeah. Um, he, uh, he really talks about the science behind uh, the foods and um, what foods can cause cancer and heart disease, diabetes. Um, hypertension. And my goal was to uh, get down uh, my, my blood pressure. I wanted to lower my blood pressure. And um, I was obsessed at that time to find any food that would um, improve it. And another obsession was eliminating food that would, um, you know, cause my blood pressure to go up because I wanted to prove this doctor wrong. So I did a ton of research. Um, the research uh, led me to Dr. Furman, but um, I've learned so much, even in that first three months, about food, and uh, it's really become an obsession. And uh, today, um, I, I told you about this on the phone. I, I, I don't mean to be jumping around, but today I started the um, T. Colin Campbell uh, nutrition course. Um, I mean, I'm working on that now. I'm in the third week yeah. now. And um, I was thinking about becoming a nutritionist, but then I kind of backed off getting a, uh, another degree because... Um, 
I, I don't think I agree with the way they're teaching nutrition in a lot of schools. As you know, probably know, a lot of them wouldn't be plant-based. Mm. So I would have a lot of disagreements. Uh, right. And uh, T. Colin Campbell's course is, of course, plant-based. So, um, you know, th this way I could say I have a certificate. And uh, when I try to share my knowledge, you know, at least I have something to, to back it up. Well, there, there's so many things. And, and maybe that's something that I would love for you to do. Uh, is list the things that you currently believe about yourself that you didn't believe. Like when you go to describe yourself, what are some things that you believe about yourself today? Maybe it's that you're unstoppable or maybe it's that you can, you can help others in their health journey and be a, be a health advocate or a coach. Um, what are some things you believe about yourself today that are brand new for you that you did not believe a hundred, you know, a hundred and some odd pounds ago. Um, the first word I, I think is determination. I never knew I was uh, that determined. I, I never determined. Yeah, uh, determined. I never determination. I never ever thought that I could um, lose 150 pounds. You know, you don't think about the whole picture, especially when you first start your journey. And um, you know, my my goal is to get healthy, but still. If I looked at the whole picture, you know, it just amazes me now when I think about it because um, to have that kind of determination, I never really knew I had it. And uh, this way, well, it brought out the determination. It brought out the was, determination. Um, yeah, and, and I'm sorry, but, but you, you mentioned, I have to go back to it, that you didn't realize that you had kind of this competitive streak or yeah. maybe you'd use a different word for it no but I, that's I tied that's into this determination yeah uh, competitive the, yeah yeah definitely i i um i never really um realized i had this com competition you know within me this uh, competitive spirit um because i i um as much as i um like basketball or baseball i wasn't in the into high school sports you know i always felt like i wasn't good enough and uh, I wish, I, now looking back, I wish I got into it. Um, you know, I, I, um, I know I could have been a great uh, runner. I wished I did track back then. Uh, so learning what I um, am now makes me have somewhat of, of a regret of what I could have done, but I try not to focus on yeah. regrets anyway. But, so. You know, I think that's good that you bring that up though, because one thing that I often, say to uh to folks that i have a chance to to talk with whether it's in session or on these shows is i do think it's part of the journey i think yeah you don't want to live in regret but i think it's okay if you if you have those and it's part of the, it's almost like there's a mourning process that that happens as you uh, as you 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 get this new life you know and you have all these new things that, that you're that you're enjoying about this new life but there also is this past like this loss of time and you mourn exactly. that Gosh, I just yeah. think it's so common, you know, and I think that for you to bring that up is, uh, is so right on because I know a lot of people end up feeling that way. Definitely, definitely. So um, the third, yeah. uh, the second word um, would be um, stubborn. I had no idea that I would be this stubborn about, you know, keeping at it. Um, you know, I'm not a quitter now. Um, I strive to do the best I can, um, proving people wrong which I think led me to um, vegan bodybuilding because uh, who had ever, ever would- Wow, imagine. vegan bodybuilding, amazing. And that's something I never, ever imagined. Um, you know, who, who am I to think I could be a, a bodybuilder? You know, um, you know, past college years, who, who, who would think it? You know, but um, that's, that's where uh, my passion was, I discovered a couple of years ago. And uh, I went with it. Um, and that's, that's also uh, some advice I want to give to people who are, um, you know, on their journey to losing weight. I think you need to find your passion um, for what you like to do. You know, some people discover that they like to run. Mm -hmm. um, I know somebody else who um, liked to swim, and he lost a significant amount of weight just by swimming. So I think you really have to find um, what you're good at, especially... I think people who are obese, they don't realize um, what they're capable of once they lose the weight. At least that was the case for me. 
So um, just just find what your passion is and um, go with that. Yeah, I, I, again, there's just so much to kind of re re reflect on here. Um, I just, I almost think you, you need to have a picture um, if you can. Can you, can you share that picture one more sure. time? Uh, of, yeah, of where you were at. Yeah. I'm trying to have yeah. a reflection on it. I mean, you know, there, uh, there you go. Yeah. So, you know, I, and the reason I have mixed feelings, I, I think the before and after photos are needed to just show people because right now they're listening to you and they're going, this guy's a vegan bodybuilder. I mean, he, he's in great shape. Uh, you know, th th this guy can't relate to my story. He doesn't know the struggle. But, you know, you have to remind them by showing them those photos yeah. that you can relate to, to you know, to, to where where you've been in this journey. And uh, but but there but again, this is a huge transformation. And if we just said that's a pretty cool transformation with before and after photos, we'd be doing you a huge disservice. The reason why we have this broadcast is to highlight stories like Richard's. And I know there's people out there. So here, here's one thing that I want to challenge people with. What is something right now that you are 100% rigidly certain on that you are not? So maybe it's that you're not a vegan bodybuilder or that you're not an athlete or that you're not competitive or you're not driven. Or as Richard said, there was this belief in high school that I wasn't enough. I would imagine Richard feels differently now. What is, a, what is a belief that you have that you feel so strongly about? You're, you're really rigid. You're really locked in. You believe there's no way you could do, do a, you know, fill in the blank. And I want you to then look at Richard and just remember that there was a time where there was a lot of things that he would never have believed about what he's living right now. And he's living it out. So if that's his story, why can't it be yours? I mean, right, Richard? Absolutely. What else would you add to I that? always feel like if I can do it, anybody can. Because I, I really was uh, in that, um, you know, area where I, I just felt like I couldn't get out of it. Um, hopeless area where you just, um, you know, you try the yo-yo dieting. But I, th I don't think my heart was in it at the time. And I think you really have to, um, it's really about lifestyle change. If you're um, sort of half-hearted about it and, you know, um, uh, you know, try this diet or try that diet, the fad diets. I don't think uh, it'll work. You know, you might temporarily lose some weight, but uh, I think you really have to um, change your mindset. You have to have a goal. Uh, my goal is to lower blood pressure, get healthy. Um, you know, it, it's got to be beyond the weight, I think. Yeah, it's got to be beyond the weight loss. Yeah, and, and and then you have to also change it as you go, like you were talking about new new goals oh, that you absolutely. have you know I'm, I'm curious i'm curious as you as you move into to kind of this new world um a lot of times in the research that i that i had i'll share some of it with you and if you have reflections or if you have things you can relate to by all means uh, i would love to hear your stories but one of the things that we talk about is that people when they lose weight and they've been overweight for a large portion of their life it's a new experience. It's really overwhelming uh, to go from being overweight. And um, some people talk about the experience of being uh, ignored or not seen. Uh, and then all of a sudden going from ignored and not seen to all of a sudden being, you know, getting more attention and, oh, um, and kind of being noticed more. Yeah. So I'm just curious. And people talk a lot about how, how overwhelming that is um, I, I and, was... you know, how hard that is to navigate. I was so uncomfortable and I was losing the weight. I was uh, uh, nervous to walk in um, a grocery store, for example, because, you know, people would uh, come up to me and I wasn't used to that and say, wow, you lost a lot of weight. And at first I would deny it and say, oh, I lost like 20 pounds. Uh, eventually it was getting hard to deny all the weight loss because it was getting so obvious. So um, eventually I got to uh, where I was proud of my weight loss, but that took a long time. And um, I'm not used to being in the spotlight, and I felt like I was in the spotlight when I was losing the weight. And uh, when people watch your transformation at a gym, they, they know your story from the beginning because they see you, how heavy you are. Unfortunately, that's what happens in a gym. People do stare at the obese people at least i feel like they do maybe that maybe they don't really but that's yeah. how i felt at the time so anyway as i'm losing weight 
I felt like everybody was staring at me, watching me, and uh, it was really uncomfortable. Um, I mean, I was happy that it was working, but it was hard for me to believe that they were actually talking about me at first. You know, it's just. It and, 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 like and, and, and how long has it been now since? I, I reached my lowest in. How um, long has it been since you've lost the weight? Yeah, December of 2012 is when I reached my lowest. And I, so yeah, you've you've been here for a while. Do you find do you find that with time it, it's gotten easier to uh, to kind of accept that that attention is you know that that it comes now, or are you more used to it? Do you feel more comfortable with it? I'm used to it, but uh, the problem is, um, which also isn't really a problem because it motivates me, is the loose, loose skin that a lot of people have heard me talk about on Facebook on my abdominal area. That's part of the reason why I got into bodybuilding. Um, the, the loose skin is um, something that um, I think of as a way to motivate me because I, even though it might never go away, I think somehow it gets me to the gym. But maybe there's some remote chance that you know my stomach will um, tighten because I refuse to have surgery. Uh, I feel like um, surgery. What would it? What's that? I was going to say, yeah, um, I know that people, it seems like everyone's got a different perspective on the surgery. And for you, what, what, is, what would it mean to get surgery for the loose skin? For me, um, it would be like I'm uh, giving up in a way because I'm trying so hard. Um, I did all this without weight uh, surgery, so it just seems like um, somehow I'd be um, quitting. I, I don't know the, what the right word I'm trying to think of, but it just... Uh, it just isn't me. I, I, I don't think I could do surgery. It just, uh, yeah. And, and there, and there's, there's something too about like, you, you know, proving the doctors wrong, proving also wrong. Like it, prevailing wisdom says that it, it's hard to get rid of the loose skin. It's almost like that's, that's going to be something that you, you that. challenge. I, I absolutely do think that way. Uh, you know, I'd love to prove these doctors wrong. I've had, um, plastic surgeons look at my, um, um, abdominal area they all say no it can't be tightened but I, I would just love to prove them wrong even if it's just uh, you know halfway better than what it was I mean it is a lot better actually um, I, I have I do see muscles there that I never uh, saw before so it may never be perfect but they they are wrong that it would not get better it has gotten yeah better. wow Again, but there's that streak of you that that com that that competitive stubborn that I never knew streak I that continues that you never that you never knew you have. Do you feel like in in ways that's made you a, like more maybe more of an assertive person over time? It has, because for example, I never would do an interview like this. Uh, you know, um, I would shy away from <laughs> awesome. things like this. Um, but you know, it, it's made me more um, open about. Um, um, being plant-based because I like to share the knowledge. Um, I also want people to know what, what's possible about losing weight. So that that's the reason um, I think it's gotten me more assertive. I would I like to get the word out, you know. Yeah, you like to get the word out. Now, you know, the, the other things that people talk about with the changes too is that uh, there's, there's, there's two things, and, and you can latch on to either of these if, if you can share your experiences, but one of them is that you know, as you start to get, as you, as you enter into that new weight, a lot of your people in and around in your support system, some people either resist or that some people, uh, you know, resist your change and kind of like are, are, uh, are less than supportive and others are really supportive. And there's also this thing too, where, you know, we, we, some of that attention you get is from the opposite sex or, you know, uh, and, and things like that. So uh, have you noticed either I, of those? I phenomena? have noticed that, um, some people didn't support me, um, and not directly. What I mean is, uh, you know, I'll hear comments like, uh, don't lose too much weight, or, you know, you're getting too skinny now, or, you know, comments like that. Um, and uh, my stepmom actually said, um, when I became plant-based, um, you know, it was a borderline anorexic behavior because it's, it's something she's not, you know, accustomed to. She don't understand mm. plant-based. Wow. Wow. Um, I just like to prove people wrong. So I think hearing how she views veganism and that just pushed me, as you could tell from my personality now, that pushed me to want to prove how healthy it can be. And um, 
you know, she once showed me a picture of this um, uh, vegan on the left, a woman and a, a meat eater on the right, and told me, look how healthy this woman is on the right. But you can find any picture to compare. You can find unhealthy vegans and uh, healthy. Oh, yeah. You know, you know. so I, I didn't buy what she was saying. And that stubborn streak in me just wanted to prove her wrong. And, um, yeah, I think I was pretty successful with that because I've been plant-based now for almost 20 months. And uh, I'm not protein-deprived. Uh, you know, none of these things that, that people worry about. Iron's fine. Calcium's fine. I'm sure you know the, the drill. You, you hear it, too. Yeah, I hear it, I hear it all the time. Um, I, you know, I was telling someone recently that, my grandma, I love her, uh, but but she was, you know, she pulled me aside a couple of times and said, you know, this plant based or not plant based, you know, this vegan thing is going to be the end of you, yeah, and you yeah. know, uh, like this doomsday, like you know, the, the look and and uh, and that's at a family event, which I'm sure you can relate to, where I'm yes. already not eating what everyone else is eating, and that's you know, I wouldn't say that's hard per se once you get in the groove of it, but it's, it is. but it's more hard from an emotional standpoint. You know, it's, it's kind of like just feeling like, geez, you know, you have to yeah, you have to hear that from it, grandma yeah. and then, you know, yeah, you get used I to it. Yeah. Used and like you it, said, you gotta, you gotta uh, it, it channel it. Annoying after a while, you know, it's not, it doesn't hurt you. Um, you know, people will say, where do you get your protein from? I hear at the gym. You know, you just, uh, I take it as an opportunity now to explain you know, all plants have protein. Um, but, you know, it does get annoying after a while uh, to hear these, you know, questions, which we all do being plant-based. Yeah, yeah, you absolutely do. Um, so, so so, where you're at now and, and kind of looking at your journey, I, I want to get to some of these questions here in a second. Um, as I do, I, I, I did send you over that, uh, Yeah. Let, some of those I am statements. Yeah, and let, I'm let curious, I'm going to look at... Uh, you you look at that, there, and while you're looking at that, I'm gonna look at some. That, uh, you know, I'm it, gonna look at some of these questions. Um, I know that Amy had a question here. I'm gonna scroll back up and find it. Um, did you lose the bulk of the weight the first year? Is did. the question that she had. Yes, um, you did. Was, uh, yeah, 120 pounds, I believe, the first year. Um, the rest came off gradually afterwards, and uh, I did gain about. 10, 15 pounds with the, the muscle when I transitioned to um, the bodybuilding phase. The majority was the first year. Majority was the first year. Um, we have some people checking in. Dan sa saying, hey, Richard, Dan, a.k.a. Indian Rock Vegans from Namarata, B.C. So nice to put a voice to the face. Uh, we have Jennifer uh, saying that that Patrick uh, Baboomin, I'm not sure how to say his last name, world's strongest man is plant powered, just like Richard. Some more people talking about that. Um, uh, Shirley said, I think for Dave and I, in the very beginning, we were so overwhelmed, mostly because we went most of our lives on the standard American diet, believing that we were what we were always told. So in the beginning, this was overwhelming. And uh, yeah, I, I could share in that too. Like it, it'll be eight months for me in a couple of days. And I know that in, in my experience, uh, anxiety was really prevalent that first 30 days, this sense of almost feeling trapped. And I remember I had to talk with that a lot of, with my coach, um, uh, Sharon McRae about that because I felt like, oh my gosh, like everything I know is kind of shifting and my world is changing <laughs> and it's scary. You know, I think change, even when we're changing in a positive direction, change is taking us away from our baseline level of comfort. Exactly. And so I think for, for all of us, uh, yeah, that, that that seems to be the consensus. Definitely. No. Um, yeah, so yeah. The, uh, so yeah. I, I, and now you look. You look at there. There are these some of those I am statements. Yes. And, and what what Richard's reviewing right now. Let me just set this up for you guys. Is there are some I am statements that we are getting ready to. Uh, they're on some. They're on some shirts out there for the Dr. Mondo program. They are foundational in what we believe in. Um, and and these I am statements are foundational uh, to what we believe is rewriting your story. And so there's going to be a lot more that we're doing with that. We're actually going to be doing a book later this year. So we're adding some video lessons to the rewriting my story program to feature these I am statements. And so there's, there's a seven that I gave Richard to review uh, in the book. There'll be eight, but there are these seven statements that I wanted Richard to look at. And I wanted him to just look at them and say, is there one or two that you could there particularly is. resonate with, or that was particularly really hard is, yeah. for you? 
to believe in and actually feel it in your bones. So yeah, which of those statements the first one, uh, the really, stuck, really stuck uh, resonated with you? to me you? was um, evolving. It's, I am constantly evolving, I think. Um, you know, not just with the awesome. weight loss, it's happening, um, you know, as I gain muscle um, and learning uh, more every day. Um, I, I don't think I ever stopped learning after I uh, lost the weight and during that journey too. Um, it's amazing how much um, knowledge so that, I gained. Yeah. I was gonna say, so, so, so that evolving to you, when you think of rewriting your story, to be able to say to yourself, I'm evolving, yeah. there's, some, there's some pride that you take in that, I imagine. There is, there is. Just so many things you can never, as I said before, I could never imagine doing you know, I'm, I'm evolving. Um, you know, um, you know, someday maybe I'd like to do a marathon. I don't see why not. Um, you know, there's just uh, so many goals that I have for, for myself that um, I would like to do. You know, uh, another goal I didn't talk about a few years ago um, when I started my bodybuilding phase, I wanted to um, become a personal trainer. So I got my certificate in that. Um, you know, just, oh wow, it's yeah. awesome! So um, I did do um, some personal training, but uh, yeah, I, I didn't have um, as much time as I wanted to devote to it. But I did it just just prove I could, and also um, to to learn more about bodybuilding. So um, now I have the knowledge that I could um, you know coach somebody if I wanted to. And um, that's awesome. So I'm evolving resonates with you. What 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 else? Is there anything on there that's been a struggle that, uh, that you, when you look yeah, at that? Yeah, let me look at the list. I'm sure there's. Yeah. So what he's looking at again, and, and, and maybe, uh, Ashley, if you could post uh, an image. Uh, I think I may have sent you one recently, but um, it's of this shirt. And this shirt we're going to have with us on tour when we do the Slang Shame tour in New Jersey, Boston, and uh, Baltimore, which is coming up in a couple weeks. So we'll have these shirts available. This would be the foundation of the program, the foundation of the book that'll be coming out later this uh, either, well, I'll say early next year, just to, to be safe, but it'll be probably here before that. Um, but there's these I am statements, they're foundational to rewriting your story. Richard is reviewing them right I, now. I already uh, have the word and, and, that uh, I'm vulnerable about. Uh, so, so, so yeah, I am enough. So the, so one of the statements that, that is foundational to rewriting your story is believing, not believing here, but believing in your heart that you are enough. And that one is still that one's still a work in progress. Yeah, it is because I, I feel like I can never quit. I'm, I'm a perfectionist. Um, you know, it's constant need to tighten my skin. You know, most people would either give up or, or want to do surgery, but I feel like um, I got to keep going. Then it's not enough what I've done already. It, it could be a good thing or a bad thing, I suppose. But um, you know, I, I feel like enough. That's that's the vulnerable word for me enough and that was something that you know one thing i'll say if you guys got a chance to see this list and i know that it, it's we might not be able to post it right now but we'll post it a little bit later for you guys to take a look at um and, and you'll be seeing a lot of it as we get ready to launch the book and everything but you know i think the thing is is that a lot of this stuff is ingrained in old fragments of our story like there's so much about who you are now that is evolved as to use that that term but, you know, like I, heard, I caught you saying earlier, you know, I didn't go out for football. Or I didn't go out for baseball because I didn't think I was good right. enough. Right. right. And and there and there's things like when I hear people say I struggle with the lovable part. Well, I've always struggled with that since I was a kid. So I think that it's important to mention that some of these things that we are constantly kind of working on throughout life. And that's why it's rewriting our exactly. story, not I rewrote my story. Right. 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 That's a good point. Yeah. Is there, is there any on there that you do believe um, that you believed even before you lost the weight? Any of those statements on there that you believed it before you lost weight, you believe it after you lost weight? Like it was just a core part of your believing. Um, I, I do think I, I was um, strong, strong to be able to tolerate you know, what I've gone through. Um, yeah, to put my body through such abuse, I, I must have had some strength um, to want to keep going. Uh, you know, I lost my weight, but I, yet I kept going. So I think that took some strength. 
but you know that that's really important to point out because you believe that and that's why everyone's story is different it's so fascinating i think there's some people right now that are listening that that, that they would say that they, they don't think that they're strong um because they put the weight back on or because they're not in ideal shape um that's a really good point uh so so again you believed you were strong even when you were overweight because there was something about that experience that must have made you strong. Exactly. Um, I, I mean, I, I was strong to, you know, go away to the, um, in New York City. I, I never um, lived there before college. You know, there's lots of examples of strength, I think. You know, inner strength, just, uh, you know, proving that I could uh, do things. I, I think, um, yeah, strength carried me throughout life, I think. Not, not just in the bodybuilding phase. What what are some things now as we talk about rewriting your story, Richard? That, um, and we'll take some questions before we we start to kind of wind down too. What are some things that are on the horizon for Richard Hubbard? Things that, as you are evolving, it's a central part of who you are. What are some things that are on the horizon? Like when I look ten years from now, if I gave you the ability to to take the pen and to write the story and write the chapter of what it's going to look like 10 years from now, paint the scene for me, where are you living? What are you doing? Yeah. You know, I, 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 what's yeah, your life so, like? Um, I, actually, a few people told me I should probably write a book, which, um, you know, I might end up. Yeah, writing. yeah, absolutely. Um, other goals I have, um, I, I really want to be some kind of nut nutrition coach. I, I see myself, um, you know, maybe as a personal trainer advising people and, you know, what diets to eat as they uh, try to, you know, try to transform their bodies. Um, another goal I have, which is more recent, um, now's a good time to probably show this. Um, I'm starting a um, vegan um, t-shirt company. And the reason I'm showing oh, this, love it. Uh, I want to give a shout out to the um, Missing Chins group, um, which you mentioned. Yeah, earlier. yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, they're, they're doing a, sh a Shed a Chin Challenge. And um, the winner, I, I'm, I decided we'll get this uh, vegan beast mode shirt. Uh, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, the, uh, that's a great shirt. Thank you. It's awesome. Yeah, the, the store, um, we're hoping it'll be open um, mid May, but it's uh, veganbodygear.com. And um, love it. I'm, I, I think uh, a lot of people, uh, you know, love to support veganism, plant-based, and I think it's important to showcase this in the gym. Why? Because I, I think that we're, there's not enough of us out there. I think if more and more people show that, you know, you, you can build muscle or you can run marathons uh, being plant-based, you know, uh, the better, you know, the more people that know about it. And uh, that's yep, why. Yep, there it is right there. Yeah. I feel like this is a show and tell or something. <laughs> but that's why um, no, I, love I just it. want to mention Robert Cheek because um, he's the one who um, helped me um, transition to this vegan bodybuilding. Um, his uh, shirt, No Me, No Problem, which I'm wearing now, um, that helped me be more open about my um, diet and my transformation to being plant based. Um, I, I bought the shirt thinking. Um, you know, I'd like to support him. And then one day I thought, you know, why, why not tell people I'm doing this? Um, I, I was doing a 13-week challenge at the time with the Shredded Journal. Um, this okay. was September 6, uh, 2016. That's when I first became vegan, and, and I didn't know I would stick with it. This journal was 13 weeks long. I was going to stick with this diet for 13 weeks, see what would happen with my muscles and um you know, I, I didn't know I was going to stick with it. But after the 13 weeks, I felt great, was building muscle, and I thought, uh, this is something I could stick with. And here I am today, uh, 20 months later, and um, nobody's more surprised than I am that, I, um, that I'm enjoying it as much as I am, and I stuck with it. But there's that determination again. You know. Yep, it, it, comes, it comes back and around. Uh, Richard, speak to the people out there that, 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 aren't, that aren't feeling very determined. They're not feeling very strong. There's people right now listening that are, that are feeling hopeless. There's people right now listening that, that can relate a lot to where you were at on, on, on day one, uh, on day zero. Uh, 
to those people, what would you want, want to say right now? I would say never give up. And also, don't uh, look at the overall picture of how much weight you have to lose. Anytime I've done that, it failed. I think just take small steps and um, work toward being healthy. Uh, maybe if you're eating um, a lot of ice cream, for example, um, cut out the ice cream. You know, um, take small steps. And I, I think when, when people take small steps and they see the numbers start to drop, then, then you can increase the amount of steps you do. Um, but I, I don't think you could do it overnight. And, um, you know, take small steps at the gym. You know, um, start out um, like doing four miles an hour on the treadmill. Or if that's too fast, go two miles an hour. But um, uh, do 20 minutes at a time, but um, keep going back. You know, just don't give up. And I think uh, that, that was the problem I had was giving up um, for many years, not seeing results. But I see what worked for me now was um, that I didn't, um, you know, I, I didn't dive into the exercise right away, um, you know, an hour and the treadmill right away. I kind of phased myself into it. You know, you have to, I think you have to, um, if somebody's that heavy, they have to phase themselves into um starting the journey yeah I, I think that's a great point because so many people um feel like you have to go overnight yeah exactly. and and make this drastic change and and, and that can be really overwhelming it is. granted there are some there are some people that can do that and, and we've heard some amazing stories on this broadcast but i'm glad that you bring that up because i think that more often than not uh, a lot of people need to ease their way into change Otherwise, it feels really overwhelming and scary. My coach was on here earlier, Sharon, and, and she's saying that I've come so far. And I always remind her it's because of her walking with, through it and literally holding my hand that I've come this far. But like for me in my journey, I remember there was times where it was like, I'm not giving up that bitchin' sauce, which if anyone's vegan, they might know what that sauce is, which is a, it's a dipping sauce for vegetables. Or I'm not giving up that, that fake nacho cheese vegan sauce that I got at the store. And those things, you know, I had to slowly let go of some things and, and, and I, or I had to let go of oil right. at one point. There are things that, that we cling to and we find safety and security with. And if I just had all of that stuff ripped from me, chances are I would have felt scared and overwhelmed. Exactly. And I probably would have at some point protested and went back and given up. But, you know, I met myself where I was but at. She met me up. where I was at, too. Oh, sorry about that. Can you see me okay? Uh, sorry, I didn't get you. Yeah, your video is breaking up. So. Oh yeah. Well, and anyway, better. you know, it's just it's it's more to more more to basically say that you know start where start where you feel right now ready. You want to push yourself outside of your comfort zone, but you need to do it in a way that you're constantly still feeling like you have one foot on solid ground um, as you're moving into that unstable ground. Because otherwise, what I see happen a lot is people get overwhelmed and they just go right back to their old habits because it's safe and it's easy and it's comfortable. So again, start where you are at. Um, Richard, is there anything else? Uh, I'm going to go go through some of these comments before we we close out tonight. Um, I'm just so thankful for you sharing your your story of determination, stubbornness, and and, and everything, involvement, everything in between. Uh, is as I go through these 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 uh, comments. Is there anything else that you wanted to share? Um, I'm trying to think. Um, yeah, well, I was thinking back to my, my, the beginning of my journey and how I um, gave up um, small things. Um, for example, um, I, when I gave up fast food, I gave up um, McDonald's first. You know, as an example, it was small steps. I, I still have, um, I, I blogged about this a while ago, um, it's on my blog. I um, saved the last receipt that I had from McDonald's from uh, wow. January of 2012 because I knew um, I was making a change. Uh, I think that that um, wow. You know, if if you can um, find something that you want to stick with, even no matter how small it is, I think that's that's a motivator. And I, I think um, that step led me to realize that. You know, I, I, it doesn't have to be just McDonald's. I can give up, um, you know, uh, red meat 
I think that was next to go. And um, aspartame, um, it, it really was in steps for me. Um, I think it would have yeah. overwhelmed me if I did it all at once. Yep. Yep. And that's part of what, what I would say, too, is knowing yourself, you know, have self-knowledge about who you are. It's not a one size fits all approach. Know what works for you. And if it is more of a process of, you know, I want to give up things slowly, which I think the majority of people, I think Richard fit into that, then, then that's the pace that you need to go to, need to go at. Um, uh, real quick too, BJ, who I believe is going to be our guest. Do you know BJ? No, I don't think so. Yeah. Uh, she, uh, she, she's going to be, I believe, our guest next week. Ashley, can you confirm that? I'm pretty sure that's what's happening. BJ has been, we've been trying to get BJ on the show for a long time, but she's saying shout out to Sharon and Sharon's saying to her, happy birthday, BJ. So, uh, so yeah, I want to, want to, want to wish a happy birthday to BJ. Thank you for joining us on your birthday. Yeah, that, I don't birthday, know. That's, BJ. I, I, yeah, I don't know if you should be joining us on your birthday. You got probably a lot of other stuff going on. Maybe your, your night's winding down. Um, uh, yeah. Um, and, and she says yes to that. So I will see you next week. And it's not a one size fits all, uh, but results are typical. I love that. Yeah. Um, Josh Lajani and I know a lot of other folks keep sharing that. Is that one of your shirts? The, the results are typical? No, but it should be. It's got to be. I mean, I, I don't, and again, I, maybe they already have that shirt. I don't want to take that. The chin's already got right. it. Someone needs to make that shirt because I've been literally, literally thinking that all week, the results are typical. That is such an amazing it statement. Is, I is. hear it from everyone in this community and it, and it, God, does that just that communicate so much because you do, you see these, you see these results, you see Richard Hubbard, this uh, evolving vegan bodybuilder, you see Justin Lacey and 300 pounds loss and you go, Oh my gosh, amazing. I wish I could do that. And then I love the thing the is they can. Are typical. They can uh, yeah. yeah, it's all they can. Yeah. It's typical. Yeah. You just have to have the right yeah. right mindset, and I think you also have to be ready yep. for it because that physical, you know, that made me um, ready in a way to lose the weight. I, if they if my if my uh, state job didn't start offering me insurance, I was thinking about this. Where would I be now? Would I have been forced to change? Would I have gotten my first physical? I mean, my first physical in years, I shouldn't say. I never had a physical, but it was years and years since I had a physical. And um, just amazed me when I think about it, how these sequences happen, because if that didn't happen, you know, would I be sitting here 400 pounds? How is that to reflect on that? Is that, that that's probably like, uh, yeah, it must really touch yeah, you. It blows my mind when I think about it, because... Um, it's just amazing the the chain of sequences the way it worked out and there's things right now that are happening in people's lives that they probably don't even see the opportunity or the invitation to sure. um you know and uh and yeah you know and, and and that's i think right now that that's what i hope that, that as we as we get ready to wrap tonight that right now evaluate your life and evaluate the, the sequences in your life right now and are you right now in the middle of a sequence where there's an opportunity to change? Um, maybe this is part of your sequence. Maybe it's hearing Richard's story tonight um, that, that is part of your sequence of change and believing you can change. And, uh, and, and again, I just want to echo that, that, you know, um, Richard, I'm sure it would be great if you could just include how people can get in touch with you or if people do want sure. to, to follow your story, if you could put those links in. Um, but, you know, if there's someone listening tonight that it could be part of their sequence of change just to listen to this broadcast tonight. And, uh, and so that makes yeah, me really hopeful. If I could even help and just, the other thing I'm going to take for, I was going to say, if I could even help just one person, I would be happy. You know, I, I, I believe in these inspirational stories and I, I I'm just hoping that, um, yeah, I, I am helping somebody out there because I really believe that uh, anybody can do it. Yeah, you, uh, you are, you, you are, you are helping people because the comments are coming in, but you are one of those real life inspirational stories. Uh, you are going to continue to evolve. And when I do, you know, we'll keep up before, well, well before this, but as we talked about in five to 10 years, you are going to be that, that coach. You are going to be that vegan bodybuilder. Your video is um, You up. are going to continue to be sharing your, Oh, sorry. You are going to continue to be sharing that story uh, and your story 
and motivating others. And I think that it's so cool that, that you have both this, this yeah. tenderness to you yeah, yeah, you're uh, never that, gonna that, give up that makes you, that, that makes you, yeah, you have this tenderness to you, but you also have this determination to you. And I think that makes for a heck of a coach um, and, and someone that can help a lot of people because you can connect with them emotionally, empathetically, but you can also push them and you can harness this this belief system that maybe they don't have now, but you found it. And it's this belief that anything's possible. Uh, so I look forward to keeping up with you, man. And uh, And I'm just so appreciative of you joining us tonight. Yeah, I was happy to be here. Happy to share the story, and um, I've loved all the other podcasts you've done. Um, yeah, I've been friends with um, Tim Kaufman, um, uh, Justin. Lee, yeah, I yeah. Became friends with uh, recently after seeing his story. That was so inspirational to me. Um, all, all of your uh, stories, um, you know, just amazing transformations. And um, for me to be a part of it makes me uh, feel so honored because. Um, what what good company that is, you know, they're, they're such awesome people, you know, I just, I'm amazed by every one of their stories. Yeah, and they're amazed by you, they keep saying it over and over and over that, you know, it's one of those things that uh, there's a certain part of, I think, everyone's evolution when they, when they realize, uh, I'm, I'm part of that group, and you are, like, uh, you're part of that, that inspirational crew that, that people are looking to, and, uh, yeah, man, I just, I really want to, I want to validate that for you. Um, and it's really important, I think, for you to hear that and accept that and own that. And, uh, and yeah, it's part of your involvement. But yeah, you're, you're part of one of those inspirational stories that you've been reading for all these years. And, uh, and you're also one of those inspirations to me too, because I look at your journey and I'm like, man, you know, last week it was thinking about how I got to get back to running and now I'm like, I got to go get some of these books that you're mentioning about vegan bodybuilding, you know, um, and, and you're also instilling in me this determination and this belief uh, that anything's possible, which is something I already believe. But when I hear someone else say it that believes in it like you do, it, it makes me really fired up about it. So, um, yeah, I just appreciate you so much. You're you're one of those those people that you're that you're talking about. You're one of them, man. Yeah, I, I feel honored, like I said, to be in that, that company, believe me. Yeah, yeah, well, and, and again, thank you for always being a part of these broadcasts. We'll keep doing it every Tuesday night, and I know you, uh, I hope you keep tuning in, and please share, and I'm sure we'll have you on again down the road. Videos, break it up uh, again. Do you have a vegan, is there, oh, okay, is, is there a vegan bodybuilding competition that you're going to do, or are you just doing it to, to, to do it type thing, or? I think we lost Richard. Richard, oh, man, thank you so much uh, for joining us here tonight. Um, I, I'm just going to, to – and thank you, uh, Suzanne, for so many great comments. I'm seeing all – guys, I see all of your comments. I just want to let you guys know that. Um, uh, I, I'm hearing everything the guest is saying, but I'm always seeing your guys' comments, and you guys are always so kind, and you guys are so encouraging. And when, just so you know, like when you light up the screen with likes and loves and wows and all that stuff – um, I see that too. Uh, it shows up on my end and it really, I really appreciate it. Uh, if you don't notice, I get fired up even. Um, and so thank you guys again for just tuning in tonight. Uh, I really appreciate everyone for being here. I appreciate Richard for allowing uh, me to just be a part of his story and his transformation. What, what's really cool is that, you know, uh, Richard talked about being a part of the, of this, uh, this list of guests. Um, it's an honor just to look back and see the collection of folks we're putting together. There's so many more that we haven't talked to yet. That's the amazing thing. But, uh, but each week, you know, I was reflecting on that each week I get so much from these broadcasts and, uh, you know, I feel like my job is to hopefully tee people up when we're doing these shows to be able to tell their story and to tell it in a unique way and ask the right questions. But I'll tell you that I really get, um, I really get impacted by it. it. It really inspires me. And, uh, and I'm hearing some of the same from people out there. And so uh, if that's the case, uh, please continue tuning in. Every single week we'll be doing this. We'll be back next week uh, with BJ. It's her birthday this week. And uh, we'll be sharing next Tuesday night with her. She'll be telling her amazing transformation story. Uh, we just have an amazing month planned. Um, we have the, uh, I can't remember, I, I, I called him the, the Elvis of plant-based. 
Anyone know who the Elvis of plant based might be? That's that was my term. That, and then I called him something else today. It wasn't the Michael Jordan of plant based, although I guess that would probably work too. One of the big, big names in plant based has just agreed uh, to, to do our show, and uh, he's going to come on at the end of the month. I'm not going to announce it just yet because I'm going to wait for it to be all confirmed. I'm pretty sure it's confirmed, but I just don't want to put it out there yet. We have all amazing guests this week. Tune in next week for BJ. We have the plant-based Elvis, the plant-based Michael Jordan, someone that's inspired so many people uh, in, in, their, in their weight loss journeys and their transformation journeys. Uh, he will be joining us later this month, we think, we hope, we're pretty sure. And, uh, and, and yeah, tune in next week to BJ's story. Um, I'm telling you, uh, again, each week, all I could say is that if you came here and you were inspired or you were encouraged, uh, amazing. That, that, that's all we hope for. The other thing is, too, is that if you are looking for some guidance and, and, and uh, some bit of uh, some semblance of, of guidance on, on kind of what to do next, there are so many good programs out there. Uh, there's so many good ones. Uh, Chef AJ's Ultimate Weight Loss is one of them. Uh, gosh, there, there's stuff on the Forks Over Knives website. I'm going to miss them all. You guys can list them. But, uh, you know, I just want to, to say that uh, we have a 30-day whole foods plant-based immersion group. It's, it's more of a support group, but it's just for people that are considering making the transition. We just started actually today. It was day one for a lot of people going 30 days plant-based. Maybe you heard Richard's story and you're thinking, man, maybe I should stubborn, or I should channel some of my stubbornness and use it uh, for my health journey. Uh, maybe you want to, you want to try this and you want to just find out if for 30 days you could slowly uh, phase out meat or you could slowly phase, phase out cheese. Um, you know, whatever it looks like for you, if you want to join us, we'd love to have you. And uh, we'll have Ashley drop the link in there. Um, yeah, DJ said, yes, chef AJ ultimate weight loss. And uh, everyone's asking who, um, it's a guy named Josh Lajani. That's, that's who's going to be our guest. Uh, might as well just go ahead and announce it. Ashley says it's confirmed. So Josh Lajani is going to be joining us uh, at the end of the month. And the reason that, 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 that I talk about Josh in, in such high regard is that uh, there hasn't yet to be many guests on this program who, uh, who, have, who have not uh, mentioned Josh in, in the role that he's played. In fact, Tim Kaufman, um, who is an answer to a trivia question. He is the most featured guest that we've had on this broadcast. He's been on twice, um, him and his wife, Heather. But, uh, you know, Tim was someone else that was mentored by, uh, by Josh. Um, when Josh took time out to reach out to him, Justin Lacey was someone else that talked about Josh. So, you know, uh, to me, I, I think there are so many rock stars in this community. It's, it's one huge collective Mount Rushmore. But, uh, but, but Josh is someone that, Every time I do an interview, it's like one of the, you know, when you feel like you know someone, but you've never actually met them because you hear so much about them. Uh, that's the way I feel about Josh. I've never had a conversation with him. In fact, I probably won't talk to him until the day of our broadcast. Um, but, but I like it that way because I'm just really intrigued by what our conversation will be about. The guy's a wealth of knowledge. Um, and so he'll be up later this month. He'll be at the end of, uh, at the end of the month. And, um, and, and again, uh, he's just one of so many amazing stories. So next week, tune in. BJ Swingle will be on, and she'll be sharing her story. And uh, believe me, like when we had uh, uh, Nalita on a few weeks back, there are so many amazing women. I don't think there needs to be anything said after that. I'll just say, put a period out of it. There are so many amazing women in this world, period. There are so many amazing women also that are in this plant-based world who are just inspiring so many lives. You know, so many of the folks that tune in on this program happen to be women. I keep saying this to Ashley and I keep saying this to our viewers, but we need to recruit more and more women uh, who are powerful and who have incredibly inspiring stories to share their stories. Uh, and I think, I think of it as a duty to make sure that we go after uh, those types of guests. And so BJ is one of those guests that um, has been on my radar for a long time. more women. So um, anyway, I'm just, I'm excited. I'm excited for all of you guys. You guys have a great, great night. We will see you next week. Have a great birthday, BJ, and I'll see you in a week.